What's up, Cowboy Nation and Cowboy Headquarters? And here we are with your boy G, the number one Cowboy fan, Hampton, coming to you live, direct, and correct. And I'm back again with some more news that you can use. I was going to wait till tomorrow to make this announcement, but due to the fact that it's out there and it's been told, so we might as well talk about it. So, hope everybody's doing great. I hope everybody is getting ready for this uh, great weekend. We got uh, a line ahead of us as we celebrate TGIF. And I am very excited that it is Friday and it is the weekend, baby. So uh, first I wanna say thanks to all the subscribers and all those that follow this channel. We're not a large channel, but we have some faithful, faithful subscribers where we come together in the cowboy huddle and talk about our cowboys. So um, as you guys know, it has been told, and I'm sure we all have heard that Dan Quinn is actually going to stay here in Dallas, which is great. I, I think it's the, the best news that we could have heard. And um, I'm excited, which we talked about this before. And I have mentioned, come on. And I had mentioned that Dan had mentioned, no, Dan had mentioned um, earlier that, you know, he was in a press conference. He had mentioned about him coaching for 20 years and, you know, having that head coaching title and all that came with being a head coach to where he made the statement that he has his feet planted here with the Dallas Cowboys defense and he feels great where he is. He's comfortable doing what he like, what he does. And that's working with the defensive players and being out there with them literally out on the field. Uh, when I was in Oxnard, I could truly say the man was out there with uh, Randy Gregory, uh, Jalen Smith, Michael Parson, I mean, going one on one with these guys and, you know, putting using hands on with these guys. So uh, to see that, man, you know, that's just his passion he has for his defense. So and I know it was a, a, a tough choice that he had to make because we know that Denver was really, you know, pursuing him big time. And I had mentioned on our live stream and I had asked 520 um, uh, this question as well. I say, do you think Dan would rather go to a team and resume the responsibilities, all that comes with it as being a head coach and doing the things a head coach has to do and give up what he has in place with this Dallas Cowboys defense. We've seen some great things with this defense with Michael Parson, with Trayvon Diggs, uh, with Greg, uh, Randy Gregory, with Tank Lawrence, with Neville Gallimore. This is like a, this is like a money bag that you have and you have to decide, okay, I'm going to hand this money bag over to start a new money bag, or am I going to keep this money bag that I got here and build from? It? Well, Dan Quinn decided that he's going to keep the money bag that he has and add to it. So I say that to say what will happen from here on out, looking forward towards the draft the free agency as i mentioned before we have 23 free agents out there and there's a lot of them from on the defensive side of the ball with our safeties with our linebackers uh that is going to be major um uh, and how are we going to adjust or how are we going to deal with that situation 
So again, it's great to know that Dan Quinn is going to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm very elated that he's going to be here um, to see him another year for 22, 23. But also Jerry has made it known that Mike McCarthy will be back. Mike McCarthy job was not up for debate. Mike McCarthy job was in place which is i think it's it's okay you know i still have some questions about hold on i still have some questions about his management you know as far as what he does or what he does not do on the field that still bothers me and then we talked about the 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 the, the conversation about sean payton sean payton possibly coming over to the cowboys and i kept saying why and i know some of us are saying well you know sean payton sure it's sean payton uh, but i keep asking the question what is so great about sean payton mike mccarthy's record is just as good as sean payton they both got one Super Bowl. They've all made playoff appearances. So do we do a tit for tat? Are we for certain that Sean Payton is going to come in here and take us to the promised land? We don't know. Was it worth it? And I know some people say, oh, yeah, I think we should get Sean Payton. And that's pop. And, you know, and I understand. We don't know what would happen, but, you know, like I say, right now, I think Sean Payton would probably be a better manager of the game from what I've seen from Mike McCarthy, but that's still something that we have to, you know, speculate, okay? But, um, so, yeah, um, Mike McCarthy is staying as well. So we have Dan Quinn stand, and we also have Mike McCarthy stand. Um, it's also been brought to our attention by Blogging the Boys. Big up to Blogging the Boys. I like those guys. And I like, uh, I think his name is RJ. RJ, yeah, I like to watch him, man. He's pretty good at reporting and everything. Big shout out to him and all that he does. But um, it's also was told earlier in the week cowboys fan got word that offensive coordinator keller moore was likely staying with dallas but it also has been told that he has a, an interview with miami but jerry has told 105 Three, the fan that he wants Keller Moore back. I don't know about y'all, man. And Dallas Cowboy Chris know how I feel about this. He know I'm just not a big fan of Boy Wonder. But my question is, if we plan on keeping Kellen Moore how do we expect a change if you bring in the same thing that you left out of the season with and you bringing them back how are you going to make this better how are you going to make this team better with the same identical situation Can we say, well, it was Dak because Dak had a, a bad leg? Are they gonna are they gonna use that because Dak had a bad leg? That's why they played so bad. Because well, you know, the cat's out the bag now. Well, we could tell you, yeah, Dak wasn't 100 percent Really? And I understand that Cooper Rush may not be Dak, but if, if a person's not 100 percent why is he playing? Same thing with Zeke. Zeke is not 100%, but he's still on the field when you have Tony Pollard over there. You know, so those are the kind of things that kind of bother me with, with McCarthy. But are we going to blame Dak? Are we going to blame Mike McCarthy? 
Well, Mike McCarthy, he should have stepped in. And he should have changed, changed, you know, what was going on. Well, Mike, Mike McCarthy didn't change the situation with Mike Nolan. He allowed that to go on through the whole season where we made history and giving up the most points uh, in the Dallas Cowboys organization ever. He never made a change. So who do we blame for last year's 12 and five disaster? We blame Mike, do we blame Dak? And I'm sure every, every each one of them have their, their play a part in the way our season turned out. But again, I tell you that there's something that hides behind Mike McCarthy. And there's something or somebody that hides behind Dak that sits back there and doesn't get any blame. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Kellen Moore. And I've never haven't gotten really actually on the conversation about Kellen Moore, but Kellen Moore is a quarterback coach that played quarterback at Boise State, which at Boise State, they played a spread offense and they threw the ball around. But this same quarterback from Boise State came here, lost his do- job to Dak due to a broken leg, and became Dak's quarterback coach. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever paid attention to the relationship between Dak and Boy Wonder. Sometimes I feel sorry for Boy Wonder because guess what? Dak is not even paying attention when he's – you know, Dak's like, dude, you play behind me. I beat you out of a job. How is that you're going to tell me about play calling? And it makes a lot of sense. It's like at my job. If I know my job, but then we got somebody that's less experienced than me, and he's going to tell me how to do my job, nah, that's not going to sit well. I don't care how you look at it. It's not going to sit well with me that I've been doing this job for so many years and this guy just came in, which he was hired for the job, but never he got a shot at the job. But I've been doing a great job that they kept me at that job. But then he's going to come and try to tell me how to do the job. I mean, come on, guys. It's common sense. So we know the connection between the the offensive coordinator and the the quarterback, there is a big disconnect. They're not on the same page. And again, I say, if you look at the offense, we're more effective when we're in the the hurry up offense. And usually when that takes place, usually when that takes place, (laughs) whenever, hey, bye. I'm doing my video. How's everything? How's everything? You are everything okay? Yes, I just took her down for MRI. So um, I got you on speaker. You do. Yeah. Yeah, I just took her down for MRI. So um, we'll see what that what happens with that when she comes back. So is she okay? Yeah, she's okay. She's uh She's okay. 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 Well, I, I'll call you back soon as this, I'm done with this. Okay. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Hey, I told you guys, man, this is not a politically correct channel. Okay. This is what happens. But I need you guys to continue to lift my mother in law up, man. She had a stroke, man, and she's in the hospital. And uh, yeah, she's doing okay. But man, y'all lift my, my mother in law up, man, and hopefully for a speedy recovery and that. Things go well with her. But um, where was I, guys? Um, So, yeah, 
with that being said, you know, you have this situation between the two, but majority of the time when Dak did the hurry up offense, basically he was calling his own plays. So I'm not going to get into all that. I'm just going to keep this moving real quick, but I just feel that there, how do we fix what we broke? We had all these all-stars. We had all these, these receivers. We had these top-notch running backs, and we were not able to be productive. But Jerry wants to keep the same coaching staff. This is, reminds me when Wade Phillips was given Jason Garrett. Jason Garrett came in as a quarterback coach, moved to the offensive coordinator, then eventually became the head coach. Keller Moore, boy wonder, came in as a quarterback coach, moved to an offensive coordinator, and God forbid he becomes the head coach. But see, Jerry, he says he was pissed at the end of the season, how it ended. I'm pissed for, I feel bad for the fans. But Jerry Jones, you had your hands all in this situation. Jerry, you are the one that gave Wade Phillips Jason Garrett, which Jason Garrett had very minimum experience on the field in the NFL. Jerry Jones, you are the one that gave Mike McCarthy Kellen Moore, whom has very little experience in the NFL. And here we are going into his third season as an offensive coordinator. And what it's looking like, Kellen Moore might be the next head coach. All I want to say is, will somebody please take the whistle from Jerry Jones? We haven't done jack squat since Troy Aikman retired. Jack squat. And here we are talking about we're going to keep the same coaches. On a break. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. There's no change. So, yeah, I feel bad just like you guys. And maybe you might think I'm a little bit too harsh on Keller Moore. Proof is in a pudding. Y'all seen it. There's no way you had that much talent. You're not productive. What does it what what does it boil down to? What does it boil down to? It boils down to your head coach and boils down to your offensive coordinator and your quarterback. So again, I ask, how are you going? How will 2022 be any different than 2021? I thought about that. I thought about that. And um I have a feeling. how they're going to change this disaster or the change the culture of this offense is drafting linemen. And I want to show you, which, you know, we know that Connor Williams is not the guy. Connor Williams is a free agent. So what do you do? Okay. Hey, we know we're going to put all the blame on, on Connor Williams. He's a free agent. So we can blame him and his poor play that that's the reason we played so badly. That's only part of it. You got Tyron, Tyron Smith that base. We cannot move. He is not a free agent till 2024. So there's no reason even thinking about it. the only thing we can do is have Terrence Steele available when he goes down again, because we can't do anything with Terrence, Ter, uh, uh, Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith. There's nothing we can do. Um, but I'm thinking 
this is what they want to do. I want you to look at this guy here. All right. Let me get this guy right. I want y'all to see this guy here. Now, if it was me, this is what I would do. Knowing that Connor Williams is a free agent. But now let me say this here as well. I looked at some of the top linemen out there, which uh, Tyler Lind Linderbaum is probably the top, along with Evan Nils. With Evan Nils or Tyler Lind Lind Linderbaum will not be available at 24. So I come up with this guy here, Kenyon Green from Texas A&M. I like him. So what you do, uh, you know, he, right now he plays at right tackle. And I know what you're saying. Well, you got Leo Collins at right tackle. But this guy plays right tackle and he plays guard. So you got two options. You can either slide Leo Collins and Connor Williams spot or you can bring this guy. Now I want you to watch this guy. Great pad level, stays low, digs into the ground, ah, keeps his shoulders square. Watch this. This guy, is, he's a beast, man. This guy is a beast. I love this guy. Watch him pull ah, down the line, puts his pad on his pad, and pancakes him. Watch him again. Holds his square, keeps the man off. Oh, another pancake. And then he, that's dog right there. That's what we need. We need a dog. We need a dog on the front line. Watch what he does again. Watch what he does here. Comes around. Gets downfield. This is it. I believe this is it. This is it. But I love this guy. Good footwork. Ah, pancake again. Quick, I mean, his feet work, footwork is, look at that. Get up, feel, stays on his, keeps his shoulder square. Shoulder square, picks up, release, picks up the next man. I love this guy. Uh, look, taking him to the second level. He doesn't give up. He, he, he blocks to the whistle blows. Here he comes. He's at guard, pulls, get his body on. Look at that. Come on, man. Come on, man. This is what we need. Here he is at guard right here. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. Woo! What you say? What did you say? So if you're going to do that, I understand. Uh, this guy here. Kenyon Green, uh, he's 6'4". He's 6'4". Uh, what is it? 325 pounds. He runs a 5'3", 8 in the 40. All scouts average is a 19.9. All scout average position rank. Overall drag, he's an overall rank 19, position rank five. Come on, man. Now, I looked at Neil, uh, Evan Neals. I looked at Charles Cross. I really, and, and Linda Bum, I don't think they're going to be there at 24. I really don't think they're going to be there at 24. So I'm looking at the availability, but I really like this guy, uh, Kenyon Green. I really do. Uh, there's another guy. His name is Sean Ryan. Um, he's another guy that might be available. I think he's at, out of UCLA, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, yeah, UCLA. And uh, so that's where we're probably going to go. But, again, we cannot expect an offensive lineman 
to change the whole narrative of this offense. So the question was asked to Mike McCarthy. So Mike, why don't you call a place? Oh no, I'm not, I'm not calling the place. I don't know. So we're just on the outside looking in. Trying to figure out how is this offense going to be any any better than it was last year with the same pieces in place. And again, I say I can I'm OK with Dan Quinn. I'm OK with Mike McCarthy, but I have a problem with Boy Wonder. He can't coach. He can't call plays. I hate to say it. I'm just going to tell you like he cannot call plays. I really think his plays are script. One through 25. Again, there's no way you have that much talent, guys. And we're not productive. That the receivers are now becoming disgruntled because they're not getting the ball. And I understand, but if I play receiver, I know what that's like. I remember you coming off the line. You make your break. You create space between you and your defender. And you look up for the ball, and he's throwing the ball somewhere else, or out of bounds, or being pressured, getting sacked. And you continue to do that and do that and do that. And you continue to get open, and it's not being, he's not being looked at, or he's not, the ball's not being there because the quarterback's being rushed. So I think they think by getting the lineman and maybe firing Joe Philbin which if they bring bring in Mark Colombo, if they bring Mark Colombo back, maybe that'll help. But our blocking scheme is terrible. Joe Philbin, Fibbin and Boy Wonder, that's just a portion of our problem. But anyway, guys, it is what it is. Um, we are who we are <laughs> right now, but I am excited that we do have Dan Quinn back, but I really felt that we needed to talk about this and find out, you know, what is the plan? And I want Jerry to tell us all, what is the plan? I want Mike McCarthy tell us, give us the blueprint on how you're going to make 22, 2022 look different than 2021 well i think what we're going to do we're going to work harder and uh we're going to do it no there has to be results but anyway guys that's my time appreciate you guys stopping by and uh being a part of this video but i just had to get on here because i'm gonna be really really busy tomorrow and i uh, won't be able to do a video so i'm doing it tonight but guys just make sure you you uh check us out on monday night uh we're going to do a live stream on monday night and we're inviting all uh our subscribers to participate get in the comments uh we're going to try to uh feature one of our uh individuals from the come in allow them to come on and uh engage with us as we do in the live so if you are willing or if you want to so you know we might randomly pick someone to come on and uh participate in what we're you know in our live so that's going to be monday night at 7 p.m central time and then we have what's up wednesday night um same time 7 p.m central time so we definitely need you guys to participate in our live stream and let's continue to talk about what's going on because we really finna start getting into this draft and uh, talk about this draft and uh, what moves we're going to make so with that being said man you know me i'm always about that action jackson stuff but uh Guys, you guys enjoy your weekend. And like I always say, 
Don't nothing come to a sleeper but a dream. Let's make it happen. Dallas Cowboys. We got to do this. <laughs>